or welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you some dodge and burning techniques. So, what is dodge and burning? Well, dodge and burn, uh, or dodge and burning, is a technique uh, from the days of the darkroom. So, imagine we have our image uh, being transmitted from the enlarger onto a piece of paper, and to lighten or darken certain areas, we would use our hands to either shade the light away from a certain area to lighten it, or, or to darken it, we would obviously use our hands to concentrate the light just in one area. Okay, and this would uh, this would obviously help us uh, guide our viewers' attention to certain parts of the print. Now, in the dark, in the in Photoshop, sorry, we can do a very similar technique using the brush tool. Now, there is several ways of uh, of doing dodge and burning, and today I'm going to show you a simple uh, technique and uh, quite a fun technique. So this is our uh, image we're going to be working on today, and uh, just looking at the image, our focus is is really on this uh, tree trunk here and some of the lovely textures. Um, so to help us maybe reinforce that, we can use this dodge and burn technique, which is basically going to add um, shading and some lighter tones to the image, and uh, also sort of add contrast. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, or certainly some of the videos, I'm always going on about certain things that help extend or guide our viewer's eye through certain parts of the image. Now that could be uh, a strong colour like red, it could be um, uh, brightness, it can be contrast, it can be sharpness, but these are all tools we can use to help really make certain parts of the image pop. So today with the dodge and burning we're going to not only sort of shade and lighten this tree trunk, um, but it's also going to add that bit of contrast and bite to that part of the image. So to do that we're going to show you a simple way uh, there's many ways to do this as I mentioned a minute ago but I'm going to show you a, a simple way of doing it we're going to add a new empty layer to the top of our stack here uh, we're going to change that blend mode to one of the two we can use overlay or soft light now soft light is a more subtle blending mode than overlay and that's the one I prefer but if you want something a bit stronger you can always change it even after you've painted your effect on that layer you can change it to overlay but we're going to pick soft light and we need to get a brush now we're going to add some darkness first of all to our tree trunk so we're going to set make sure that black is in the foreground color now the secret to this is to do your adjustments on different layers but also uh, to do it at a very slow or low sorry flow rate rounds or five to eight percent is probably a good start and uh, you'll see why because as you're painting this you may think oh this isn't doing very much the image but when we zoom out and turn the layer on and off you will see that actually it is making quite a bigger effect and we don't want to overdo it we want to build this effect up quite slowly so I've got my brush tool we've got my a pass uh, the flow sorry down to around eight percent and we've got black in the foreground and our layer our anti layer is on soft light so I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start painting with black on the tree trunk here okay whoops get rid of that so I'm just following some of the tones that are already there some of the shaded areas like this trunk here it's got a, a bit of a, a bulge there, so I'm just going to shade that a bit more. Again, around here, you can see that effect. Even though I'm on a real low flow of eight percent, it's already making quite a big difference to the, to the image. Uh, and don't forget, it's, it's a good idea to zoom out as well every now and again just to see the effect. In fact, I'm going to lower this flow down even more. And this is just helping me just to kind of add some shape and make the trunk stand out. I'm making some broader strokes now and just accentuating the light, the darkness on that side a little bit. And as I said, we're just going to build this up slowly. Maybe a bit around the base here as well. The good thing about layers, if we have done gone a bit too far, we can always drop the opacity on here, if need be, or add a layer mask and say there's a certain area that we've gone a bit too far, maybe down here, we can just paint with a mask highlighted, just paint with black to take some of that effect away. Okay, Make sure that you highlight the layer that you're working on again afterwards. 
So let me just zoom out again. As before, this afternoon, I've done this rather crudely and rather quickly. I'm just going to highlight the mask again. I'm just going to paint back with black, paint back this area a little bit. Cause I think we've done a bit over the top there. Okay, so that's our first bit done. We can then add another layer. Same again. We're going to go to soft light. But this time, with a brush tool selected, I'm going to pick white as our foreground colour. And again, make sure our flow is down quite low. I'm just going to zoom in. And this time, I'm just going to lighten certain areas. So I've just carried on painting rather than keep you there watching me uh, laboriously paint over uh, all the uh, tree. I'm just going to add a layer mask to this layer. This is our lightness layer now where we've lightened the image. And I'm just going to paint again with black uh, because just this little bit down here, I'm not very happy about. So I'm just going to take that away from there. So let's just have a look. Uh, there's before, there's after. So that's made quite a big difference again. Please bear in mind, I'm obviously working very quickly here, and I've not made a, the best job job of this, but it gives you an idea what's uh, what's possible. I'm just going to group these. Command and Control G to group them. So there's before, and there's after. So it's made quite a big difference to this tree trunk. As I said, it's uh, not f extremely well done, but it just for, for quickness, just showing you what's what's possible. So we can now carry on if we wanted to, maybe work on some of these background elements. And back here, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm uh, going to go to soft light again. And I'm just going to darken. I'm going to paint black in the foreground. I'm just going to use quite a big brush on this one. I just want to darken some of this background a little bit around here and this is a great way and a fun way of doing that like so and again just helping our tree here just stand out that bit more like so so you can have a lot of fun with this, uh, really kind of darkening and lightening areas. Um, it's especially great, and I know this is about landscapes, but it's especially great on portraits, uh, especially if you've got like a mature uh, subject, someone with you know quite a weather face. You can really make the skin pop um, using these techniques. But again, just go very, very gently uh, and slowly build it up. Uh, if you've got one layer perfected, you know, but you still want to add a little bit more, maybe worth just adding another layer and leaving that one alone. And it's very important, I think, uh, to name your layers because they're all going to look the same. So I'm going to just name these ones, lighten, darken, and then that one could be darken back uh, background. Another thing I would just recommend is just uh, selecting all your layers and just locking these together because it's very easy to uh, knock uh, layers and uh, and have them go out of register. So a good habit to get into. So there's before, there's after. Like I said, very crudely done, but it gives you uh, an idea uh, of how what one way of uh, of doing dodge and burning. Um, we can also do this in Lightroom. It's not quite as easy in Lightroom to do, but if that's something you would like to see, maybe leave a comment under the video here for uh, for my editor at uh, Learning Landscapes to see. And if we've got enough interest, maybe we'll do something similar in Lightroom and show you how uh, that's possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this very brief video, but uh, I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.